Internal Revenue Service IRS tax news. IRS reminds employers to e-file payroll tax returns timely. But first, an unknown source heard from another unknown source's brother who heard from their uncle's super smart and informed dog that to save the world from global warming, the IRS is planning to propose an individual personal carbon emissions tax. Cows are not the only toxic greenhouse gas emitters, they proclaim. With just a few small government-mandated surgical implants located near the primary carbon emitters of the body, the government can monitor each individual's bodily carbon emissions, allowing them to apply a fair and equitable individual carbon tax accordingly. If you plan on a particularly spicy meal for one night, which may increase your personal carbon emissions past government-mandated levels and want to avoid the individual carbon emissions tax, that's okay, provided you purchase carbon emissions credits on the market from your neighbors who have an excess reserve. How would I know which neighbors have an excess carbon emissions reserve, you might ask? Should I simply observe the neighbors and ask the ones that look like they may be experiencing constipation? No, that's silly. The iris will make the individual carbon emissions public record. So you can simply look up the carbon emissions of your friends, family, and neighbors, allowing you to purchase individual carbon emissions credits if you need to, asking the neighbors who have an excess reserve. To address the inevitable, whiny, annoying, super stupid head complainers talking about individual liberties, the government plans to issue this formal statement. I mean, come on, people. All we're asking is for everyone to hold in their fair share of greenhouse gases. If people would just be team players and do all the incoherent things we say, we could eliminate death itself. The fact that death still exists is proof that people aren't doing what we say, clearly justifying increased government mandates and control. This is not a personal liberties issue. Individual choice is in the individual's hands. Choice A, do what we say. Choice B, we make you do what we say. We even make the multiple choice questions super easy with only two questions or two answers. The choice is up to you. Just make the right choice or else. The right choice being answer A. Choose answer A or else. IR 2021-206, October 20th, 2021, Washington. The Internal Revenue Service today reminded employers that the next quarterly payroll tax return is due November 1st, 2021. The IRS urges employers to use the speed and convenience of filing the returns electronically. E-filing is the most accurate method to file returns and saves taxpayers time by performing calculations and auto-populating forms and schedules with a step-by-step -step process. The IRS acknowledges receipt of e-filed returns within 24 hours, giving taxpayers reassurance that the return was not misplaced or lost in the mail. Electronically filed returns reduce processing time and have fewer errors, which reduces a taxpayer's chance of receiving an IRS notice. E-file users also receive missing information alerts. <clears throat> In my experience with payroll, there's no really one component about payroll that's too complex, but when you put all the things together that you have to do and the amount of transactions, it can get complex. And it's also one of those things that if you have to correct an error, it takes a lot more time than if you get it right the first time. And therefore, it's one of those types of things that you'd rather not be tinkering with until you get it right, but rather one of those types of things that you'd rather get right up front, set it up properly the first time so that you don't have to go back and basically fix it because fixing it can be more difficult than getting it right the first time and if e-filing i would imagine of course e-filing would be helpful to do that to make sure that you're getting the returns processed so that if an error comes to light oftentimes the error comes to light in payroll at the end of the year so even and then that's when you're really busy you got the w-2s you got the you know the w-3s you got the 941s and then the 940 you'd like to make sure everything's lined up properly so that at the end of the year you could just process all, all that forms and not have to deal with any kind of errors or problems that have been happening through the payroll throughout the year so in any case two options for electronically filing payroll tax returns you got the self file purchase irs approved software so typically Payroll is getting to the point where you'd like some kind of support with it, whether that be software type of support or whether that be a third party that's going to help you out with payroll or if you're big enough, have the in-house uh, type of payroll department. Software can be quite helpful to kind of guide you, but you still want to have a, you know some understanding of what the software is going to be doing as you process the payroll or else you're completely dependent you know, on, on the software and kind of at the mercy of the software. If something goes wrong, you might not be able to, you know, see exactly what happened. So in any case, you could purchase IRS approved software, 
Business owners may need to pay a fee to electronically file their returns, apply for an online signature PIN or scan and attach form 8453 EMP for required signature. And then we have the tax professional file. Use the authorized IRS e-file provider locator service. So there's a link to that here to find a tax professional who can file on behalf of the business. So oftentimes, small, even small businesses, even if you only have a few employees, may want, may benefit from basically outsourcing the payroll to a third-party provider. That's quite common these days. Make sure if you're doing that that you get a good outsourced third-party provider because it's the same kind of thing. You don't want to tinker around with payroll typically and try to find something that works because solving the problems, fixing payroll takes a lot more time than setting it up the, right the first time generally. So it's one of those things where the adage is more like, measure twice cut once type of thing would generally be be a better off type way to go in that instance also if you're going to have any kind of problems with like lawsuits and stuff like that it often comes from employees so you'd like to have the paperwork as as transparent and done to par as you can so the IRS requires all authorized IRS e-file providers to ensure only authorized users have access to secure information. Only the, the business owner, authorized signers, and reporting agents can apply for an online signature PIN. Third parties such as attorneys, CPA, tax return preparers, or other tax professionals can't request a PIN on behalf of the business, nor can they use PIN to sign, to sign returns on behalf of their clients. So there's some types of things that you could basically act as an agent, meaning doing something on the behalf of, of the business and some types of things that they want the business to basically be signing off on uh, and the payrolls, one of those things that they want to make sure that the business owner is taking responsibility on and signing off on. So for more information on electronic filing of payroll tax returns, see e-file employment tax forms. There's a link to that here. COVID related employer tax credits. The credit for qualified sick and family leave wages has been extended and amended. There's a link to that here. The employer tax credit for qualified sick and family leave wages gives all Americans businesses with fewer than 500 employees funds to provide their employees with paid leave either for the employee's own health needs or to care for family members. The American Rescue Plan of 2021 further amended and extended the tax credits and the availability of advanced payments of the tax credits for paid sick and family leave. Notice 2021-24, there's a link to that notice here, for guidance on the, on the ability to reduce deposits and request advances for the credits for periods of leave through September 30th, 2021. The employee retention credit has been extended and amended. There's a link to the, to the employee retention credit. The employee retention credit is a refundable tax credit against certain employment taxes equal to 50% of the qualified wages an eligible employer pays to employees. The modified and extended credit is available for qualified wages paid before January 1st, 2022. Generally, the rules for the employee retention credit for the second quarter of 2021 and the third and fourth quarters of 2021 are substantially similar. For more information about other uh, coronavirus related tax relief, you can visit irs.gov forward slash coronavirus. There's a link to that here. And then we have the advanced child tax credit. The IRS encourages employers to help get the word out about the advanced payments of the child tax credit. Employers have direct access to many who may receive this credit. More information on the advanced child tax credit is available on irs.gov, irs.gov. The website has tools employers can use to deliver this information, including e-posters, drop-in articles for paycheck staffers, newsletters and social media posts to share for more information see advanced child tax credit payments there's a link to that here there'll be a link to this in the description